We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your leadership. We thank you for everything that you've been doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for being here today. Because there are many people that started the year with us, but they are no longer here. But for the fact that we are alive, we give you praise. And we are here, Lord, so that we will accomplish our purpose. We are here so that we will accomplish the reason of our existence. Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us as we do so. To the glory and praise of your holy name in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank you for how you have been protecting us and preserving our lives in these days and times. There is nothing that takes you unawares, O oh God. Because in the situation of uh, Job, when all the catastrophes and tragedy, tra tragedy, tragedies and all the things that was happening to him, Lord, you knew about all those things. So, Father, Lord, we thank you for the times that we find ourselves in. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank you for the grace for the race, even as we pray during the time of the prayer time. We thank you for the cross, O oh God, that cancels all of our sins. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, even as we lay our crowns before you, Lord, even at your feet. Father, Lord, we pray that you will speak to our hearts today. We pray that you will receive light from you, from your word today. We pray that you will be compassionate towards us, O oh God, and bless us to the glory and praise of your holy name in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I hide myself behind the cross. And I pray that you will use me as your instrument, that you will use me as your human microphone to declare your mind to us in these times. Father, Lord, we say thank you and we say have your way. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to share a message with all of us that the Lord gave me on my birthday. My birthday was September. I don't know how many of you are born in September. Anybody? Nobody? So just one great person born in... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So great people. Great people born in the month of September. Praise the Lord. So God, God gave me a great message on the 3rd of September. I said at midnight, he gave me a message. And when I was praying, when pastor gave me the opportunity and said that you're going to speak today, he, 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 I was asking God, said, what do you want me to speak? He said, share that same message that I gave you on your birthday. So he gave me a birthday present. And the birthday present that he gave me, he told me to die empty. I'm sure you're wondering, say, ah, birthday present, go and die empty. Ah, so, but. It was an encouragement. He said, I'm, I mean, just, I'm encouraging you. You have life in you, and I'm encouraging you to empty yourself. Just, just empty yourself in service. Empty yourself so that everything that I have planted in you, you will not go to the grave with any of it. You want to die empty. You want to die empty when you go before the presence of God and give account of, all, of your life. The Bible says, for we must all die and stand before the uh, judgment seat of Christ to give account of our lives of what we have done in the flesh, whether it be good or bad. He said, die empty. So that when you stand before me, you will present treasures. You will not present the blessings. You will not present even the things that he has planted in you to use here on earth. He wants us to die empty. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 is my text. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 praise the lord praise the lord the bible says whatever your hands finds to do do it with your might for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in shio in the place of death to which you are going I'll read it again whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might, for there is no work, there is no thought, there is no knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. If the Lord tarries in the next hundred years, none of us here will, might be alive. Maybe the little babies that are being carried might be in their hundreds or so, but none of us seated here will be alive today. So God is telling us that we need to die empty. We need to empty ourselves in service. This is a call for us to serve. 
You might be procrastinating and telling yourself you have tomorrow. You don't own your life. God owns your life. He can call you back anytime he wants. And when he calls you back, when death comes, I read something about death. When death comes, he said he will not tarry. He will stand there and wait for you. He's not going to wait. He'll take you and go. If God has said, okay, death, go and get that person. He's not stopping. He's going to accomplish that mission. That mission is to get you out of this life and take you to the judgment seat of Christ. But God is telling you, don't be afraid of death. But be afraid of what he can do to you. He can cast your soul into hell. So serve him. You don't have the time. You might think you have all the time in the world. You might think you are alive today and you are just sitting. You might not have that time. You might not have that time. You will see it as I share this message. Praise the Lord. So September 12th was my birthday. Around midnight on this day, God told me two words to motivate me. As he granted me the grace and gift of another year. What did he say to me? Die empty. OGB, die empty. Empty yourself in service. Pastor Miles Monroe was the one that said this. He said while he was, uh, when he was alive, he said, don't die old. Die empty. That's the goal of life. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the graveyard. So why did he say this? The answer is in another statement that he made while he was alive. And by the way, this was the last message that he preached before God took him home. The wealthiest spot on earth is the cemetery. Because in the cemetery are books that were never written. Music that, were, that, that no one will ever hear. The graveyard is full of poetry that no one will ever read. Businesses that will never open. Ideas that will never come to fruition. Dreams that will never be reality. Filled with great men who died as alcoholics. Awesome women, powerful women who died as prostitutes and drug addicts. The richest place on earth is the cemetery. When I pass the cemetery, I don't get scared. Because when I go there or I pass there, I see and I hear potentials. Potentials that could have been. You can't, the Bible says in our text, he says that there is no work, there is no thought, there is no knowledge, there is no wisdom in Sheol where you are going to. So you need to exert yourself for the Lord. When they say, when pastor or the ministers and they are calling and they say, come and serve. You complain. You say this, you say that. They are doing their own job. But God is pushing you. God is telling you that you need to die empty for him. You need to die empty for him. Because the grave of which we are going to, there is no wisdom there. There is no knowledge there. There is no walk there. There is no anointing there. Even in heaven. What are you going to do with the gift of prophecy? What are you going to do with the gift of healing in heaven? Who are you healing? Are you healing God? Are you healing blind, uh, blind Bartimaeus? His eyes is already, so his sight has already been given to him. In heaven, you don't need the giftings of God. You don't need the talents of God. You use it here on earth so that you can lay out treasures for yourself in heaven. God is telling us to die empty. This is a warning. This is a call because God is about to do great things on earth. But he's looking for people who will use. He's looking for people who are willing to empty themselves even for him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to live out our fullest potentials here on earth. He wants us to die empty. Using that, he has deposited in us to make maximum impact here on earth. God created every single one of us. Seven point something billion people on earth. Uniquely. And made us different. So that we can accomplish his purpose. For those that turn their minds to him. To serve him. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. But you have to allow yourself to be used. Praise the Lord. That will come to us all. 
The same event happens to everybody. As you can see, I'm not going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 9. You can write it down and read it later. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. He said, death happens to everybody. Whether you are rich, you are poor, death happens to everybody. Death is the great leveler. No matter who we are or how well we live, our time on earth will end in, dirt, in death. The universal obliterator. In the words of the bumper sticker, there's a bumper sticker they made. It says, eat well, stay fit, and die anyway. So irrespective of whoever you are, I don't care who you are, whether you are the richest person on earth, whether you are the poorest person on earth, it doesn't matter. Great is the greatest leveler. When we will stand before God, God is not going to ask you, are you Jeff Bezos? He's not going to ask you, are you uh, Mark Zuckerberg? He's not going to ask you any of those things. He will ask you, what did you do with Jesus? Did you hear about Jesus? Did you hear about the gift of eternal life that I gave to you? What did you do with it? Did you do anything with it? Did you serve with it? Did you save lives with it? Did you share the gospel with it? And that's all he wants to hear. He doesn't want to hear about any other thing. So God is giving us this message so that he can spur us up for service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Death can come at any time. Last year, January uh, 1st of 2020, I started the year with my parents. But I ended the year with only one parent. On October 3rd, my, my mom passed away. She's no more. I couldn't even go for the burial because of the lockdown. But that is life. Life happens. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you another story before I continue to the different parts of the message. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give me grace as I continue with this message. A friend of mine, his name is Njoko Johnson. I went to school with him in Nigeria, but he lives in the East Coast. He came to the United States. Um, he studied architecture, but he went into nursing and started working in the nursing field. On the 3rd of September, in our alumni group, I don't know, some of you might belong to your groups and all that on WhatsApp. He sent me a happy birthday. I appreciated it. Happy birthday and all that. Then on the 6th of September, he spoke to one of my other friends, Carlo Kelechi, also in the East Coast. And he spoke with him. They were on video call and everything like that. Everything was okay. On the 7th of September, he complained to the wife, oh, I'm having chest pain. They went to the hospital. On the 8th of September, last week, I get a text message. He's no longer here. He went to the hospital. He never came home. He had, had, a, he had a, a heart attack. And that was the chest pain that he was having. Life is not guaranteed. He was well, though. He sent me a bad um, message, and I appreciated that. But all this is telling you is that the life that you have is not yours. God owns the life. And he can decide what you own is now. What you own is you sitting down here or you at home listening to my voice. You own now. And God wants you to use your now so that you can prepare for your after. Use your now to prepare for tomorrow. Use your now to prepare for eternity. Because the grave that we are all going to, there is no wisdom. There is no knowledge. There is nothing that you can utilize that God has given you as a human being now that you're alive that you can use in the grave. My friend has gone, but that is it. He cannot go for evangelism anymore. He cannot join prayers on Mondays and on Thursdays. He cannot go for choir practice. He cannot go to the children's class. He cannot do any of those things anymore. His time has gone. That is it. And God is telling us to die empty. He's motivating us so that we can serve. This is a call to service. For us to understand that the life that we have belongs to God. And God wants to use us so that he can do great things. Not only that. Just last two weeks. Another friend of mine. That was a fellowship member in the university days. He's no more. He's gone. A lot of people are going. But God is telling you that you should die empty. Do not go before the presence of God with any talent or giftings that he has given you that was not used. God wants you to use it all. You might think you have all the time in the world, but time belongs to God. Praise the Lord. So the preacher, I'm confronting us all today about our mortality. I'm confronting us today about our mortality. 
Sometimes we avoid talking about these kind of things. But it's good for us to talk about these kind of things so that it gives us some insight. Consider this as a memento, memento mori, which is what? It's, uh, that we need to remember that a time will come that we will no longer be on this earth. Even if God tarries, even the trumpet doesn't sound. Like I said, in the next hundred years, none of us sitting here might be alive. So will you die empty? Will you empty yourselves in God, into God's service? Praise the Lord. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And just as is appointed unto man wants to die, and after that comes judgment. So the essence of this message is to die empty. It's to motivate us to understand that our lives are finite. Our time here on earth is finite. God is motivating us to walk in the spirit and work for him while it is day for the night is coming when no man can walk. God is motivating us so that we can serve him, so that we can serve him with all our capacities, with all the, in, the, the intentions and, and thoughts and the reasons that he has put inside of us. He wants us to empty ourselves for him. Nobody should be, after hearing this kind of message, nobody should be telling you to go and serve. Nobody should tell you to go and serve. Nobody, sh you should be going to, uh, uh, you should be going to bro uh, bro to me and saying, ah, can I join the choir? You should be going to different heads and say, can I serve? How can I serve? You should be the one volunteering. Nobody should chase after you. It is for your own good. It is not for my own good. It's not for pastor's own good. It's not for anybody's own good. It's for your own good. Nobody should chase after you. You should chase after yourself because you know that if the Lord tires in the next hundred years, you would have gone to go and give account of your lives. But what treasures are you going to present at the Lord's feet? So the questions we need to ask are these. How are you living? Are you living your life maximally? Or is your life mediocre at best? Are you using what God has deposited in you for his service? To get the full gist of this message, I'm going to cover four points as quickly as I can. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First point is that you are all that and a bag of chips. That's the first point. You are all that and a bag of chips. I know you say, what kind of crazy, crazy subheading is this? Praise the Lord. You are all that and a bag of chips. Second point, be excited to explore and unearth your purpose. Third point, walk, walk, as in walking, and work in the spirit of your purpose. And the fourth point is die empty. First point, you are all that and a bag of chips. Be excited. Second point, be excited to explore and unearth your purpose. Third point, walk and work in the spirit of your purpose. And the last point is die empty. Praise the Lord. You are all that and a bag of chips. That's what God told me on the 10th of September. And I, I became ecstatic in the car. The um, Oxford English Dictionary espouses that all that, you know, the word, all, the phrase, all that, they started using it in 1989. And it meant, it's like a way of saying that this is impressive. This is great. So, but in the 90s, in the mid-90s, they added to all that, they added and a bag of chips so what does that mean that you are impressive you are good but plus extra so that is what that means he said that you are all that and it's a slang that they use here in the united states but a, you are all that and a bag of chips and that is what god told me i was driving on that they say oh you are all that and a bag of chips. When the enemy comes to you, tell him that I am all that and a bag of chips. And how is that? Praise the Lord. So if you have accepted God's gift of salvation, he sees you as his child. You are all that and a bag of chips. So when you become his child, when you accept what he did in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become all that and a bag of chips because you become impressive. You become a peculiar person. You become a unique person. God translates you from the kingdom of darkness and translates you to the kingdom of his marvelous life. He makes you different. He separates you. You become liberated. You become free. You become delivered. God changes you. God transforms you. God begins to plant even his 
treasures, his pleasures, his greatness and his might inside of you so he can use you. You become impressive, you become superior, you become peculiar, you become special, you become a sign, you become a wonder to the world. Praise the Lord. So God sees his creation as impressive, just like I said. He sees you as superior. That is why he said you are all that as and a bag of chips. You are impressive and, and, and a whole lot more. Praise the Lord. So God has created you for signs. He has created you for wonders. He has created you so that you can accomplish great things for him. John chapter 1 and verse 12. What is God telling us? He says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. You have that right. When you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, he gives you the right to become a kingdom citizen. He gives you the right to become a son. He gives you the right to even become his. And when you become his, he begins investing in you. Even when you are not his, he's still nudging you and investing in you because he is God. But when you become a son, he begins to invest in you because you now have the right to become the son and the children of God. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says there, but you are a chosen race. You become a chosen person. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So when you accept God, when you accept Jesus, when you accept that gift he has given to you, he makes you peculiar. He makes you impressive. He makes you a special person to him because you have become a tool in his hand. Praise the Lord. You are all that and a bag of chips. You are impressive in God's sight. When people want to tell you that, you know, speak down at you, you know, you know, ridicule you and say some things to you that depresses you, that affects your mental state, always remember this, that God is telling you that you are all that and a bag of chips. You are impressive in his sight. He has created you and he has impacted things into you so that he can use you and make you different. That is all that matters. What God says about about you he says you are all that and a bag of chips you are impressive and a whole lot more praise the lord psalm chapter 139 and verse 14 i praise you for i am fearfully did you see that fearfully intricately and wonderfully made wonderful are your works my soul knows it very well have you ever looked at anatomy before an anatomy textbook. I don't know how many of you are in the health sector. Have you ever looked at an anatomy textbook to see how intricate you are made? Have you ever seen that? Though technology is trying to replicate it through AI, through the building of uh, cyborgs and all those kind of stuff, but you cannot comprehend the intricacy of the human design. Just the brain alone will drive you crazy. Just the brain alone takes people that are in the medical field. How long for them to specialize in mastering what is in the brain? You finish your first degree, four years. You do another four years to get medical, your medical, whatever. You go to medical school. You do one year residency. You now you go for specialization. They say you have to do another five years or six years for you to understand the human brain. But God created this in one day. Do you see how wonderful you are made? Do you see how intricate God made you praise the lord praise the lord so you are fearfully and wonderfully made so when the devil comes to you and wants to challenge you and wants to discourage you what do you tell him i am all that and a bag of chips i am impressive in god's sight and god has even made me war more because i am fearfully and wonderfully made psalm chapter 8 and verse 5 yet you have been made a little lower than heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor God made you as a human being a little lower than angels. I don't know how many of you have encountered angels before, but they are great beings. They're super fast. I've seen their super fastness. In less than a second, they appear. You will see them coming, but in less than a second, they will cover the distance of the galaxies. I've seen it. They are great, but God made you a little lower than them. Isn't that honor? So why are you not serving him? Why are you not serving him? He made you fearful. He made you intricate. He made you a little lower than angels. And yet, he has to beg you to serve him. 
You should be motivated to serve him because you are all that and a bag of chips. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 8.18 Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and wonders. You are a sign. You are a wonder to this generation. But is the Lord able to use you in that capacity? Are you available? Because he didn't create you to be an AI or a cyborg. He created you with a free will to say yes or no. To serve him or not to serve him. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I can go on and on. I'll stop there and I'll move to the next point. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. The, God created the devil and put inside of him. The Bible says the devil is his workmanship. He put in him tablets. I don't even know how they put it in either Ezekiel or so. You know, he created in him tablets. He never removed any of those things. Because God gives his gifts and he doesn't add any sorrow to it. Even to the devil himself. So if he created the devil to be that great and put a whole lot of things in him, what about you? He created you greater. So, but it's for you to discover it. It's for you to understand. It's for you to understand what your purpose is. You are all that and a bag of chips. I say that to myself every time and it makes me crazy, especially when I'm driving because God sees you as unique. God sees you as special. God sees you. If God is not special, why is it that the seven point something billion people on earth have different fingerprints? All the walls of fingerprints in your hands is different for every single human being. Isn't that great? That is crazy. That is amazing. So God is telling you, you are unique and you are all that and a bag of chips. You are impressive and you are a whole lot more. And God wants to use you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So be, be excited and explore. Second point. Be excited and explore and unearth your purpose. Be excited and explore and unearth your purpose. Because the Bible says in our text, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, there is no thoughts, there is no knowledge, there is no wisdom in Sheol which we are going to. Praise the Lord. So God wants you to get excited to unearth your purpose. God wants you to discover your purpose by activating it, by working in it, by working for God in his kingdom, for, his, for the kingdom's benefit and also for your benefit. What I'm trying to do is to empty yourself. It is for God's benefit, for the kingdom's benefit, and for your own personal benefit. Because as you keep emptying yourself, the Lord keeps filling you. As you keep emptying yourself, he keeps filling you. The Bible says he's the one that daily loads you with benefits. So if you are retaining the blessings of God, the treasures of God, the uniqueness of God, the power of God, in your, if you retain it in yourself, where is he going to find space to load the daily benefits that he brings your way when you communicate with him, when you interact with him in the place of fellowship. There will be no room. So it will be to your own benefit because you lay for yourselves treasures in heaven. So the very core of your purpose, the very core of your purpose or potential is to be a light to point others to Jesus. The very core of your purpose or potential is to be a light to point others to Jesus. Your purpose is to pull, is, is the pool that the Lord uses to draw men to himself. That is your purpose is the rope that God uses to draw people out of sin, to draw people out of the kingdom of darkness it, to himself. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16, the Bible says you are the light of the world. A city, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand that he gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven your purpose is your light and god uses that light to shine in the darkness of sin so that people can see him so that people can see jesus praise the lord so god is our maker he knows the reason why he made us 
his thoughts and reasons for making us are for good and not for evil. So get excited to unearth that reason. Get excited to unearth that thought. Get excited to ask God the question, why am I here? Why am I here? What was God thinking? What were you thinking when you made me? That should be your prayer to God if you don't know the reason why you are here. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, famous scripture that we know. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. God has a reason for making us. The chair you are sitting on, the reason for it is for you to sit down. The fabric and textile on your body is to cover your nakedness. The masks that you are using to cover your face just to prepare. Uh, it's for prevention of COVID-19 or whatever bacteria or whatever the virus that is moving out there. Everything has a purpose. You have a purpose. So why don't you go to the manufacturer and ask him, why was, why was I made? Have you ever asked God that question? Where were you made? Your shoe is for you to walk. If you come in here wearing suit without shoe, what are we going to say? Um, is he Okay. Do we need to run and catch him before he scatters this place? You get, you get what I'm saying? If you come here wearing your singlet alone, and when your when ushers will say, Pastor, please, can we go to the office? You tell them, leave the, oh, they say, ah, he has gone, he has lost it too. You get what I'm saying? Everything has a purpose. You have a purpose. But how do you think the devils are, are seeing us? We are not activating our purpose. So what are they saying? Oh, leave them alone. Because if they decide, if they know their purpose, do you know that if all of us activate our purpose, we don't need this church to be full to shake the whole United States. How many people were in the upper room? How many people were in the upper room? Was it a whole crusade like uh, that the boy where he's preaching to thousands of people? Just about a handful of people, right? But they turned the world upside down. Because they discovered who they were in God. Praise the Lord. So if the Lord knows, so if the Lord knows the plans that He has for uh, for you and for us, does it not make sense that we persist, persistently ask Him until He shares those plans with us? Those plans is what makes up your purpose. Matthew chapter 7, 78, the Bible says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. He wants to answer your prayers. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened to that person. So he wants to share it with you. But if you don't form that bond and relationship with him, he's not going to share it with you because we are not robots and we're not AIs. He still wants a relationship with us. He wants to conversate with us. So we need to ask him because he knows the plans and we can ask him and he will share with us in Jesus name. So when you find your purpose and begin to walk in it, it will only shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until you enter the presence of light. Who's the presence of light? God himself is light. And when you discover your purpose, you begin to shine in that light. And it's not going to go dim. So fast you don't go back into sin. It will just get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter as you work in your purpose. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. All those ones are not there. And brighter. I'm just emphasizing it. I'm brighter until the full day. The day you will stand to give account of your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can share a lot of things on purpose, but we don't have time. So how do we unearth purpose in our lives? Be still. First way to unearth purpose. I learned this from someone online. He says, be still. To understand to understand how you will walk in your purpose, you must be still before the Lord in quiet time daily. 
it doesn't have to be sporadic. You have to be in his presence, in stillness, to listen to him. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 7, the Bible says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourselves over the one who prospers in the way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Praise the Lord. Be still in the presence of the Lord in your quiet time. Second point, how do you unearth your purpose? Be mindful. Be mindful. We must become more mindful. What does mindfulness mean? It means being attentive, being aware, being careful of our fellowship with God. We must be mindful of our worship of God. John chapter 4 verse 24. For God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Third point on how we can discover our purposes, be intentional. It means to be deliberate. What does deliberate mean? It means for you to be carefully, uh, for something to be carefully weighed and considered about the decisions that you make that may negatively impact your purpose. Because God has still given you your purpose, but you can do things that can destroy your purpose. You can make mistakes that will destroy your purpose, and God doesn't want that. God wants us to be intentional, to be deliberate, and understand that we need to make um, we need to make full use of our time and make understand the uh, every aspect of our time so that we are able to act deliberately in him we must be intentional we must be deliberate for the, everything ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven so that you are here you are here because god wants you to be in this time so you need to understand that and be intentional and deliberate about it last point for you to um, um how to uncover your potential is to be present so living life with purpose means being in the present moment and knowing that nothing is by chance every moment is a chance to make a difference you are in victory court today it's not by mistake so god is going to ask you you went to victory court how did you make a difference when you stand to give account of your life think of how everywhere you have ever lived god is going to ask you how did you make impact in those places positively for his kingdom praise the lord so being present in each moment and is being sensitive sensitive to the holy spirit and how are we sensitive with the holy spirit the bible says in galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 it says walk in the spirit so that you do not gratify the desires of the flesh praise the lord Praise the Lord. Third point, very quickly, walk or work in the spirit of your purpose. Walk or work in the spirit of your purpose. After you find your purpose, what then? You must walk and work in the spirit of your purpose. You must walk, that's walking, and work in the spirit of your purpose. Potentials, you must work in the spirit of your purpose so that you can put it to the master's use you must do so with urgency Ephesians chapter 5 16 to 18 the Bible says making the best use of your time just like I mentioned in the previous point making the best use of your time because the days are evil therefore do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is understand what your purpose is and do not get drunk with wine for uh, for that is debauchery for, but be filled with the Spirit of God so we have to walk and work in the power of God's purpose that he has put in our lives so we are not not using your purpose is as good that's what I wrote. I said not using your purpose is as good as not finding it in the first place. You must use the giftings and the potentials that God has put in you for his service. So even if you discover those potentials and discover those purposes and you don't use it, it's useless to you. So living is better than dying. God has given us life right now. Just like the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 4. It says, but he who is joined... Uh, with all the living has hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion so what, what does that mean the same thing that paul said in philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 he said for to me it to for me for to me to for to me to live is christ but to die is gain so your life that you're living now are you living it for christ ask yourself that question are you living it fully for christ can you make that comment that Paul, Paul made? For you to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Praise the Lord. 
So God wants us to walk and work in the power of his spirit in our potential so that we can serve and be used in the master's service. Why? Because we must work the works of him that sent us, John chapter 9 and verse 4. We must work the works of him that sent us while it is day for the night is coming when no man can walk. So do not bury your potentials. I'll give you this as an assignment because of our time. Luke chapter 19 from verse 11 to 27 or Matthew chapter 25, 14 to 30. Go and read about the parable of the talents. Don't, do not bury God's purposes in your life. Don't bury it. Do not bury it. Go and find out what it is and begin to use it. Praise the Lord. Final point, die empty. Anyone who walks in the light of the scripture will, uh, will die empty. What is the scripture? Whatever you find your hands to do, do with all your might. For there is no work, there is no thought, there is no knowledge, there is no wisdom in sure where we are going to. So if you live in the light of that scripture, you will die empty. And God wants us to die empty and we will die empty in our time. Praise the Lord. And we will do God's service. Praise the Lord. Having used all the gifts and the good potentials that the creator has deposited in us. Just as Daniel proposed in his heart daniel proposed in his heart not to defy himself with a portion of the king's meat god wants us to propose and resolve in our minds that we will discover our potentials we will discover the things that god has deposited in us what are examples two examples of people that emptied their lives i was going to give three i might give the third one but elijah emptied himself for the lord he didn't die god took him to heaven alive but he emptied himself. That is why we could see the potentials at work when his mantle fell on Elisha. And Elisha started working in the power of God's spirit, in the power of that purpose. Praise the Lord. So he emptied himself. And we could see it symbolizing the mantle dropping on Elisha. And Elisha working great miracles and doing great things for God. But Paul died empty. He says what? In Paul's testimony... As he wrote to Timothy, we can see that he died empty. Second Timothy chapter 4, I'm about to end. Second Timothy chapter 4, from verse 5 to 8. As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill, fulfill your ministry. For I am, I am ready. I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, uh, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but, to, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those that serve the Lord and have gone before us, that worked and served and served and served have all emptied themselves for the Lord. So God is asking us to empty ourselves for him. Praise the Lord. Galatians, let's stand on our feet. Galatians 2 and verse 20. The Bible says there, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. Propose in your heart. I'm not going to propose in your own heart. I'll propose in my own heart. You need to resolve in your mind and tell yourself, Lord, I'm going to empty myself. Of all the blessings you have put inside of me, I'm going, here am I, send me. I am ready for service. Like I said, you might hear the topic of the message and you say, die empty. What is he going to talk about? This is a call to service to remind you that life is short. You, we all have a rope. It's time for us to pray. Wherever you are, you are home. You need to be praying. Do not be distracted at this time. Resolve in your mind and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Do something new with me. Here am I. Show me my purpose. Here am I. Show me the reason of my existence. Here am I. Do something new in my life. So open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Father Lord, we say thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you for this opportunity of coming before in your presence, O oh Lord. Father Lord, you have admonished us, O oh God, that we should die empty. 
Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us to discover our purpose. Father, Lord, help us to discover the reason of our existence, O oh God. Help us to discover the things that you have planted in us, O oh God, to do your will here on earth. Father, Lord, help us to get excited, O oh God, to even on earth, even the purposes that you have planted in our lives, O oh God. Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us. Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us. Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us, O oh God, so that we will work, O oh God, in your house, so that we will serve you, so that we will serve you with all our strengths, with all our mind, with all our abilities, O oh God. Father, oh Lord, we say, have your way in our lives. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. We thank you for, for everything that you have done in our lives. Lord, to be alive is a privilege, O oh God. Father, oh Lord, to be alive is, is a special opportunity that you have given us, O oh God. Father, Lord, we pray that you will help us. Father, Lord, help us open our eyes so that we can see that reason for which you have created us, O oh God. Father, Lord, we want to walk. We want to work in our purpose, O oh God. We want to accomplish that reason of our existence. Father, we want to die empty. We do not want to go before your presence, O oh God, with all the giftings and the talents and the potentials that you have implanted in us. Father, Lord, help us get excited to discover what those things are so that we can use it, O oh God, to serve you here on earth. Father, Lord, we say that you will help us. We cannot do it on our own. Holy Spirit, we pray that this message, O oh God, will bear seeds in our lives. We will bear, will bear fruits in our lives, O oh God. Father, let this message multiply in our lives as we see our potentials, as we see our purposes blossom, O oh God, for your service, O oh God, for the kingdom's service, O oh God. Father, Lord, we pray for your strength. We cannot do it by our own strength. We pray that you would do it for us. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. Father, Lord, help us empty ourselves like Elijah. Help us empty ourselves like Paul. Help us empty ourselves like you did even when you came here on earth. Father, Lord, we pray for your strength because we know that you will do these things in our lives. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. Thank you for these words. We pray that you will continue to speak to us by the reason of this message. Even as we uh, go to our homes, Lord, we commit this week into your hands. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name.